Hello neighbors, Akiba Taku here. Now tell me this, what is the one anime show that is both blessed with it being a great show in general and having a big audience supporting it and cursed for the fact that it is forever haunted by the public norm? Sailor Moon! I'm talking about SAO. Sailor Moon is a classic that is surprisingly dark. This is for children. Yeah, despite its fame, Sailor Moon never really had the best reputation in the West. When it came to America, Sailor Moon was heavily westernized and I put westernized with huge quotations because it contained things that is not really within the average cartoon. From alcoholic jokes, partial nudity, homosexuality, partial violence, transgender to complete cultural revision, many people thought that Sailor Moon was made by a bunch of perverted men who wanted to spread child porn to the world or whatever, but they keep on forgetting the fact that Sailor Moon was created by a woman. Just saying. Because of this, there were several attempts of a completely remade American Sailor Moon, the most famous of which is Saba Moon but nothing really ever materialized, so Sailor Moon had a perfectly normal run in the history books, mainly left untouched by the outside world, and it did its own thing. But what if I tell you that at one point, Sailor Moon, one of the most treasured things in anime history, could have had a completely different fate. This is the story of when Disney wanted to buy Sailor Moon, and this is the story of how it all fell apart. The story begins with the famous television company, DICK! I think they knew what they were doing. DIC managed to secure the license of the first two seasons of Sailor Moon to be dubbed for the English speaking audience in North America. It was from this where countless of American children finally have a piece of the mysterious Japanese pie that was anime. It had a few bumps here and there, the most famous of which is being heavy censorship, heavy editing, de-Japanizing many of the episodes, and even outright banning several episodes. But thanks to reruns like Toonami, Sailor Moon was properly installed in American homes. Eventually, DIC was merged with ABC, which in turn was bought up by the Walt Disney Company. That meant whatever belongs to DIC now belongs to Disney, which includes Sailor Moon. <laughs> This happened around the time of what we call the Disney Renaissance, where Disney was pumping out many movies that we now consider classics. Many of these movies so happens to have a strong main female character that will be an expansion of the Disney princess line. Seeing how Disney likes to buy practically what is there on the whole world, and seeing how they have a strong foothold in Japan, and seeing how Sailor Moon has a strong female character, and seeing how Disney owns the rights to the company that owns the rights to Sailor Moon, it wasn't long before the capitalist mouse set a course on the Pretty Guardian. And this is where things slowly started to go out of control. Disney had a really high interest of acquiring the rights to Sailor Moon, but there were several problems. The biggest problem for them is that while DIC did own the rights to the first two seasons of Sailor Moon, the rest of the series was licensed to Cloverway Inc. But despite the problems, Disney went ahead and planned out a project anyway. The idea at first was to make a live action movie of Sailor Moon, which would be directed by Stanley Tong. And for those of you who don't know, he was responsible for making several Jackie Chan movies. Um, good start? Eventually, it was reported that Gina Davis would be playing Queen Beryl. Eventually, other sources started to leak out information that actresses like William Pioneer, Heath Little Graham, and Elizabeth Shue would be playing some of the Sailor Scouts. Eventually, the whole project started to fall apart, and Disney really wasn't sure what to do with it at this point. So the whole thing fell apart, and Disney never got their hands on Sailor Moon. Also, I heard from somewhere that Sailor Moon creator Naoko Takeuchi told Disney to get lost when she heard about the whole thing, but I can't confirm that. As much as I like the story, you cannot deny that this was a real bullet dodge. First of all, if Disney really owned Sailor Moon, can you imagine how different Sailor Moon would be at that point? Not only would Disney run her over with countless merchandising and advertising, but also they may further censor her by trying to make her appeal to the average norm. Second of all, a live action movie? Disney made several live action movies in the past and they barely followed the source material. So why would they think a live action Sailor Moon would have worked? Not to mention, the supposed casting members, while not bad actors per se, they can't seem to properly portray Mercury, Venus, Neptune, or any other character. I got a hilarious joke about Uranus. 
A Sailor Moon movie with a bunch of American actors made by Walt Disney would have been like Dragon Ball Evolution, and we all know how that ended up. The worst part of it all is that in a few years time, we did get a Sailor Moon live action. Sure, Sailor Moon fans really like to joke at how it has not aged well, and trust me, it really has not aged well. But at least this live action Sailor Moon actually stayed true to the source material. I will honestly watch this over whatever the hell Disney was trying to pull off. Looking back at all of this, a bullet dodge would be an understatement. Not only would Sailor Moon become a Disney princess, but also Disney may have tried to get their hands on other animes at the time like Pokemon or Digimon. Not to mention, Disney would be trying to market anime to normies, and you know anime and normies can never mix. Just saying.